You know, we at the Ministry of Agriculture, we are always so very happy, ecstatic, when the opportunity presents itself to bring our stakeholders together. This afternoon is for the commencement of rehabilitation works for three agricultural feeder roads. The Kadi Compe Road in Denry North, the Boakano Road in Mikud North, and also the Monkayan Road in Beaufort North. In, sorry, in Beaufort North, right. Just yesterday, we had a sword turning ceremony for the Migni Derash Road in Fosse Jacques. Now, this, this rehabilitation um, works are basically opening the way for diversification and transformation and of transformation of the agricultural sector and enhancing farm income. This initiative is funded under the European Union's Agricultural Transformation Program of the banana accompanying measures, and I'm sure most people now are familiar, better known as the BAM. All right, so as we move into our next segment, the remarks segment, at this point, I want to first um, invite a lady who wears many hats, Mrs. Tracy Polius. She's the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Economic Development, and she is also the National Authorizing Officer for St. Lucia. She represents the EU delegation in Barbados in St. Lucia. Mrs. Tracy Polis, you invited to the podium. Good afternoon, however, as we are in the home district of Darren Sami, I wish to speak about those individuals to whom I refer to as the champions of the BAM. It was Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi who said that champions are made of something. They have deep inside of them a desire, a dream, a vision. Permit me to venture to name a few based on my personal knowledge and interaction. Ms. Janine Blanchard, the previous program coordinator for the office of the NEO, now at the CARICOM Secretariat. She blazed the trail. She skillfully navigated the uncharted waters that was the negotiations with the EC. She was the main architect of the action fish for the BAM. Mr. Anthony Roberts, St. Lucian Paul Mondesi, Eddie Deloney Belleville, Donella Zosi, some of the EU delegation staff who all championed the cause of St. Lucia so that the dreaded D plus three would not result in the loss of those much needed funds for these most urgent interventions. The NAO staff, especially, and I will ask her to stand, Miss Christina Shalry, the BAM lady. Stand up, Christina. Who in six short months, extended by the Midnight Oils, led the charge to fully commit the funds under the BAM. Mr. Eden Compton, ably assisted by Miss Lynetta Paul, the quiet achiever, whose skills and dexterity serves as the <laughs> serves at the, as the bonding agent for the very practical and constructive relationship which exists between the Ministry of Agriculture, the European Commission delegation, the Banana Industries Trust, and the Office of the NAO. The BIT staff, led by Mr. Bertram Clark, the father figure, the agent of calm, in this environment of deadlines, adrenaline, rushes, and Templar flares. I also wish to acknowledge the achievements of the unsung heroes among us, our farmers, who have made and continue to make substantive yet unrecognized contributions to our society. They are represented here today by William Elie and Mr. Abraham George. Please allow me to recognize these champions as they come from a lineage of men and women whose desire, dreams, and vision, which radiated from deep inside them. These are the champions whose hard work and determination earned the foreign exchange that built the schools, the public buildings, the roads, and other aspects of the developmental infrastructure that we as a nation enjoy today. These champions who invested their earnings not in themselves, but in the education of their children, 
who are now doctors, lawyers, carpenters, parliament, parliamentarians, politicians, ministers of government, civil servants, and politicians that contribute to our society at present. These were the individuals who maintained relationships with England and Europe by simply adopting an attitude of hard work, resilience, and trust in their colleagues, their fellow men, and their God. I am indeed pleased that the BAM project management took up the challenge and ensured that the funding for the activities under the BAM were fully committed, and I am sure they will remain invested in ensuring the effective implementation of these, activity, these activities. Beyond this small team of dedicated persons who are the champions of this generation, perhaps it was not by chance that the just concluded election campaigns saw both sides caught in the population with Dwayne Bravo's now famous champion song. Perhaps with their ears close to the ground, they recognize that our nation is in need of another generation of champions. Let us use this moment of success and celebration as a call to arms for all of us to be exemplary champions in our area of work. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, George Washington Carver, an American scientist, botanist, educator, and inventor who revolutionized agriculture in the southern United States admonishes to start where you are with what you have, make something of it, and never be satisfied. Let us use Mr. Carver's words and follow the lead of our original champions and begin the journey to championship in whatever endeavors we are called to. I wish everyone an enjoyable day. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. Polius, for giving all an idea as to what we go through to get things done with EU funds. I remember back in 2013 when we signed a financing uh, agreement. Thereafter, several farmers and other persons would meet me and say, "Me, lani laja bam depi jusala no pa kawe laja hot kapo laja pu kozot." You know, but the EU procedures are very cumbersome. And it takes a long time to go through all the approvals. And what you see here today started way back in 2010. So I'm glad Mrs. Tracy Polius was um, able to share all of that information with you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to invite to the podium um, our new Minister of e Education, Innovation, Gender Relations, and sustainable development. I remember last carnival <laughs> on the road. She's an avid, avid carnival lover. <laughs> last carnival on the road, <laughs> we discussed feeder roads. <laughs> and you know, it's a year. It's a year. And we're going to be on the road on Monday. Uh, yeah. So then we are going to discuss rehabilitation of Wakan Road. Honorable Gail Rigobert, you're invited to the podium. And thank you so very kindly for your very gracious comments, Mr. Compton. My colleague, Minister, the Honorable Jimmy Henry, Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives, allow me to acknowledge my classmate, Ms. Tracy Polius, now in charge of the helm of the ministry responsible for orchestrating today's event in large measure. Let me also recognize some of the familiar faces in here, Ms. Mathurin from the PCU, Ms. Shalry, who I now know is rechristened the BAM lady. <laughs> the familiar faces in Mr. George, the farmers whose faces and names I've grown to know from childhood the government officials, people from the community of Miku and surrounding areas, and your most able MC in the person of my dear friend, Eden Compton. The media, good afternoon. I stand here 
almost overcome with emotion because this is my playground. Notice I did not say this was my playground. This has been and continues to be my playground. I know this area intimately, not only as a resident of Miku Village, but as the child of a farmer and agriculturist and a dear friend to the proprietors of Latil Falls. So I really do want to echo Mr. Compton's encouragement for you to use the daylight hours and explore the scenic beauty of this space. I noticed he fell short of inviting you to partake in the dry coconut that Sly offers. You will de develop a new appreciation for slices of dry coconut after Sly has offered you some slices of dry coconut. <laughs> it is interesting, as Ms. Polius traced the genealogy of this project, that I found myself able to identify with and recognize some of the names that she mentioned. Some of you may not realize that in a previous life between April 2010 and April 2011, I served as the advisor to the then Prime Minister, Mr. King. And it was during that time, working along Ms. Blanchard and Mr. Rages, if my memory serves me well, who was the NAO officer at that time, trying to make sense of the new dispensation that we were confronted with. Because here we were at the cusp of a paradigmatic shift moving away from the comfortable Lome arrangements into new WTO arrangements with serious implications for the agricultural industry and for our farmers here in St. Lucia. And too very often we overlook what that transition has meant. We overlook the fact that that transition has meant a cultural shift in the earning habit of a weekly paycheck, so to speak, to becoming accustomed to something more unpredictable and highly seasonal, and what that meant for the well-being of the families of farmers. We don't often speak to that reality. We don't often speak to the reality that many farmers found themselves being plunged into poverty through no inherent fault of theirs except that they may not have been adequately prepared for that transition. We also do not speak to the fact that notwithstanding the many opportunities that we often speak about regarding emerging crops and opportunities within the wider rubric of agriculture, that many of our farmers have not been able to make that bold step to capitalize on those emerging opportunities. And now is a good time for introspection that even while we focus on the infrastructure, and there is no denying that the physical infrastructure is an important component in ensuring the full productivity of the agricultural sector, that there are other accompanying factors that we must begin to question. And is it that the re-socialization of our farmers has been a lot slower than we intended, notwithstanding our Herculean efforts at the ministerial and other agency levels, because I know of your efforts. So we now have to ask the question, why the slow uptake in the new habits, new ways of doing things, new cash crops on the horizon, why is it we have not seen an adequate and near equivalent replacement to green gold and all that's meant for our farmers? But having said that, I remember the days when we tried to make sense of what the BAM arrangements would look like. 
And here I am on the other side of the spectrum, not as a public servant or advisor, but as a shepherd of the people, seeing it come to fruition, I must confess I have a tremendous joy in my heart. Thank you so much to the NAO office and to the agency, Ministry of Agriculture and sister agencies responsible. I must reflect too, after the passage of Hurricane Thomas, because that then became my responsibility. I never anticipated that it would become so intimately involved in crisis management and rebuilding after a hazard, such as Hurricane Thomas, that we toured many of the agricultural communities and we saw the damage that was done to many of the agricultural feeder roads. And we wondered whether this country would ever be able to generate the adequate revenue to engage in a wholesale rehabilitation of agriculture feeder roads. And I know that there are farmers in here with whom I have had one-on-one -on -one conversations who lament the state of the roads in their respective areas. We will come to you eventually, but let us today celebrate what is happening here. I wish to thank the farmers for their patience. You have demonstrated tremendous patience and understanding. As Mr. Compton and Ms. Polius have both highlighted, some of those processes may seem onerous and cumbersome, but the outcome always benefit the community. So I thank you for your patience as well. Farmers have a strength which is almost synonymous with that of the bamboo, that no matter what they're subjected to, somehow they bend but do not break. And it is that strength, I think, that infuses people in communities such as ours. That ethos, that resilience, that commitment to continue no matter what. And that is why we can be here today and say we've come a long distance. There is some distance yet to go, but we must stop, pause, and celebrate our wins, our achievements along the way. Let me thank my colleague, Minister Honorable Jimmy Henry, Mr. Compton and his team, all the officials from the Ministry of Agriculture, and the Ministry of Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport, and Civil Aviation. We're still in the learning process. But let me thank all of the agencies, the farmers and the farmer representative groups for being here today, for partnering with us, and for seeing this project thus far which is an important signal to us that it will come to full fruition and benefit the community and the farmers for whom it is intended. I thank you very kindly. Thank you, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, for detailing agriculture on a global scale, on a regional scale, and on a local scale, and also putting out to us here the challenges that farmers go through on a day-to-day -day basis, particularly for following a disaster. Um, this BAM initiative totals 10.3 million um, euros, which equates to somewhere now around 26 to 7, 27 million Eastern Caribbean dollars. When we signed the financing agreement in, on the 6th of May, 2013, the total was 35 million Eastern Caribbean dollars. But as most of you are aware, there was a significant devaluation of the EU dollar, and we lost somewhere in the region of 8 million Eastern Caribbean dollars. We could have done more. We could have built more roads, um, but it's, not, it's really not easy, you know. Okay, so without any further ado, yeah, there are more activities, but without any further ado, and in the interest of time, um, 
we have with us this afternoon Honorable Jimmy Henry, who is the minister within the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical, not Physical Development, Physical Planning, <laughs> Natural Resources, and Cooperatives. And he's going to deliver remarks. Honorable Henry, you're invited to the podium to deliver remarks. Thank you. Let me start by first extending a warm welcome to all our stakeholders who are here this afternoon. I am delighted to be part of this sword turning ceremony today. Farmers utilizing the Cardi Compe Road in Denry North, the Boakanan Road in Mikud North, the Mon Kayan Road in Viewfort North will be the main beneficiaries of this effort. Just yesterday, the Ministry of Agriculture collaborated with the Ministry of Economic Development to organize a third turning ceremony for the rehabilitation of the Dewash Agriculture Feeder Road in Font Saint Jacques Souffre. This support from the European Union, European Union's ATP BAM program for agricultural development was part of the 2009 Geneva Agreement on the trade in bananas with which the EU concluded with a deal with Latin America, the Latin American countries and US, settling 15 years of banana disputes. The agreement also implies cuts in the tariffs that the EU applies to bananas imported from Latin American countries. As a result, the BAM program supports 10 banana export ACP countries to facilitate the adjustment to this new trading environment, taking each country's specific situation into account. They focused on three goals, boosting the banana sector, uh, boosting the banana sector competitiveness, promoting economic diversity, and addressing broader social, economic, and environmental impacts. The measures were identified and prepared by each ACP country in, coordinate, in coordination with the EU within wider agricultural and develop, development strategies. Therefore, the Ministry of Agriculture along with the Ministry of Economic Development and stakeholders were the architects of the BAM program with its several projects for agricultural transformation in St. Lucia. The total financial allocation for all 10 beneficiary countries is 190 million euros, with St. Lucia being allocated 10.3 million euros. Apart from the roads mentioned, these projects range from several capacity building efforts for the farms and agro processors to, cons to constructing and equipping a diagnostic facility, refurbishing, retrofitting, and equip equipping for agro processing facilities, procuring inputs for the management of black cigar toga in banana and planting, and procuring of land preparation equipped to assist farmers. However, most importantly today, the focus of farm roads is critical to our government's com com commitment to rural development. This rural road rehabilitation initiative is a key intervention. It is aimed at reducing food insecurity among our people and increasing farm incomes by helping farmers access markets more easily and access inputs such as improved feeds, pesticides, and fertilizers meant to increase agricultural production. At the, first, at the first same time, the improvement of roads mentioned will encourage new farmers to enter and expand agricultural sector. As a government, we are committed to assisting our farmers in raising their standards of living and improving their lives. We are committed to working together with all our stakeholders to ensure that through agriculture, forestry, and fisheries, we move St. Lucia forward. We have abiding faith in the agricultural sector and its contribution to national development. 
Indeed, the growth and transformation of this industry is a national project behind which the entire country must rally. On this note, let me take this opportunity to thank the staff of the EU delegation in Barbados, who unfortunately are not here with us today. The staff of the Ministry of Agriculture, the NAO's office, and the Banana Industry Trust, together with all stakeholders in the sector who, are who have contributed to making BAM St. Lucia a success. I thank you. Honorable Jimmy Henry. Thanks ever so much for your remarks. You know, I remember, I don't know, probably two years ago, he, he worked with us at the Ministry of Agriculture briefly, you know, and then when we heard he was coming across, and he did come across, you know, a group of us sat down and they were saying, can you imagine life is so strange? This gentleman came there a few years ago, sat quietly in his corner doing his work, and now he's coming as a minister. La vie d'oil, la vie d'oil, yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, we have a farmer here to represent all the farmers from the three roads mentioned, Mr. Abraham George. And I must say farmers are always on the losing end of the stick. You know, and I know he has been painting so much for so long because of the Boakano Road. You know, I'll not waste any time but to invite Mr. Abraham George to the podium to deliver remarks, Mr. George. Indeed, I am truly honored and humbled to be given the opportunity to address this gathering on behalf of the farmers of this area. In so doing, I sincerely hope that my views reflect the sentiments of most, if not all, of the farmers. I, I will endeavor to give a brief history of the road being rehabilitated the area it leads to, the farmers who originally worked these lands before the road was built, and how these farmers managed to get to and from their farms, and the importance of this road today. Um, what obtained before was a narrow track from the junction with Maho Road to the top of Boakanu, as the area is known. This tract had to accommodate both human and animal traffic. Since everyone owned a donkey to assist with transporting the produce themselves, and the children who on weekends and holidays accompanied them to the farms. I will begin in descending order from the top down. Further away and bordering for estate was one Mr. Norix Arnold, who was always the earliest on the move. He almost daily battled with snakes to and from his farm. Quite a brave man he was. Next was Mr. William Bissett, father to Mr. Gregor Bissett, former teacher, school principal, scoutmaster, member of the Constitutional Review Commission, and a community leader. He still refers to today. Mr. Bissett was also the father of, of Jones Bissett and others. I will return to Jones a little later. Mr. William Bissett also owned and rode a horse along with his donkey. He was also well known for the best coffee in Miku. He was a church orderly and in earlier times conveyed mails from Cassidy's to Miku on horseback. He was commonly known as William, William, William Poss. I think it's because of, you know, his conveying of males. <laughs> Next in nine was Miss Elise Ismon, mother, mother of the late Dr. Pat Ismon. 
noted Caribbean intellectual. She to walk this narrow track. These lands were also occupied and later developed into one of the largest banana farms in the entire Miku area by her adopted sister, Miss Janet Toussaint Christophe. I think I see her son there. She's now passed, unfortunately. Do we move on to the lands of Mr. Dolores and Anexid Gaspar? Mr. Gaspar was well known in Miku as a JP and the local dentist. Yes, <laughs> the local dentist. <laughs> Later, Mr. Cuthbert Henry, another former agricultural officer who is now dead, purchased some of this, of, of, of the, of this farm. Next was Mr. Claude Richards, who was also bounded with four estate in the lower area of Bwakanu. He was a no-nonsense guy, always in conflict with four estate. We knew the... the, the, the um, the, the attitude of, of these, you know, estates, you know, pushing you off your land and, you know, claiming it was theirs. But he stood up with, 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 with the four estate people. Then Mr. Valence Leon, Mr. Thomas James, father of Brian James, the past chief forestry officer. He too walked this, this track. <laughs> onto lands of Miss Jenny Ismo, a very humble lady. She had a son of, of unsound mind called Lucky, that's how we call him, but his name was um, Mark Vane, who walked up and down this track every day. He was a very violent and noisy, he was very violent and noisy at times, and was a menace to others. Who, 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 who trafficked this area. What actually saved most of us from his, his perils was he was very loud, so you could have heard him from miles away. <laughs> so we, had, we normally sidetracked when we heard him, and he always spoke of, of, of the world wars. I don't know if he was uh, probably uh, one of the guys who served during the war, but most of his... his, his <laughs> His princes had to do with World War, what happened during the Second World War. Miss Jenny was unfortunately murdered on her farm by some guys who came to steal her pig. Um, the history of these guys, I could safely say they were the first guys who ever built the ATV vehicles. They, they build these vehicles and use these tracks to, to pilfer from Boacanu onto Descartier. Farmers were, you know, not at peace with them. They would steal everything, tools, whatever they could, could, they could get. And, and they, had, they, they had built two copra houses. There's one they used as a bona fide copra house. But the second one was used to, to store these, these stolen implements. I could remember when enough was enough, the farmers then galvanized support and with the assistance of the police. They went up to that area and came down with truckloads of implements. <laughs> you know. Um, they were, well, one of them was, was you know, convicted and, and sentenced to, to prison. He died, I think, about two years ago, if, I, if my memory serves me. Next in line was one Miss Beauty Fanus. She owned a car on where everyone who made, where everyone made the farin. It was next to the, the river, um, the Sisit River, it is named after her mother. In fact, Volet River is composed of three rivers. This one here we call Lovier Jean, the second one Lovier Sisit, and the one between, between Boacanu and Fon Estate is called Lovier Di Bernard. 
So Violet is composed of free rivers, free rivers. Hence the reason why it tends to be so violent when you know we have we have storms and, and what have you. Next to Mr. Polymid Toussaint and his brother Jedif. They both love the pipes. At times we wonder what they smoked. <laughs> I, I don't know. This is where you got the most cashew nuts. These lands were later owned and occupied by Mr. Joseph Toussaint, Mr. Bahau, father to Zillow. He's, he's now dead. Where you still find the most nut, cashew nuts, I, I would say in St. Lucia, right next to, to this area there. And on to this beautiful place where we are now, Latil, occupied by Mr. and Mrs. Didas Joseph, I think, grandparents to John, if I, if I am right. I think that, that um, Morris took care of the persons who, who occupied this, this, this area before. <laughs> My father, my father came in a little later through land he purchased from Mr. Samson, who was the son of, of, of Sisit. Myself, my brother, my brothers, Louis, Henry, Rufus. In fact, out of the nine, I was the only one who was into this clerical thing. Everybody else were farmers, qualified agriculturists. But I'm the only one who's still left in the farming. Just imagine that. Everyone else has moved on, one to the great beyond, and the others out of it. But I, always, I was always a farmer. I'm still one. After retiring in 2009, I went into farming full time. As time went by, and after countless trips to Maho, to Sir John, on Wednesdays by the farmers, in an effort to have the road constructed, these farmers manually undertook the task of constructing the road. With the help of the entire Miku community, the road was built up to the second river that's beyond this one onto the, 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 the other one. Seeing the resolve of the farmers, government finally awarded a contract to one Mr. Harrison Rigobert, <laughs> grandfather to our beloved um, district representative, <laughs> to build the two bridges, this one here, and then the slab bridge on the second river, and continue the road up to Boakanu. As time went by and through wear and tear, the road deteriorated to the present state. Our brother Jones Bisset passed away with his fork and spade in hand, doing his bit. He traveled from Monier to here three times a week after he had retired like myself, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays and he would make it his duty every day to try and do his bit by clearing the drains and what have you. And unfortunately, he died while performing that duty about two years, I think, a little less than that ago, right up on this area. The final nail in the coffin was when Hurricane Thomas totally destroyed the second bridge. As a result, finally, as a result, famine in the area was totally obliterated. I have no doubt that this activity we are partaking in now will revive farming in Bwakanu and help us farmers to get back to what we know, especially in the Miku area. I think we can proudly say as Mikudians, farmers, we built St. Lucia. 
Sometimes I sit back at certain forums. I hear certain persons say that we help to destroy the environment or we contributed to the depletion of the environment in St. Lucia. Be that as it may, I can safely say to that the perch that some of these guys sit on to say, they, to say that to us, Rodney Bay area, we built Rodney Bay. I always say it back to them, yes, we destroyed the environment, but we built Rodney Bay, where you sit now and say, you know, such things to us. This, the opening of this road or the rehabilitation of this road will help us as farmers and the community to attempt to make the linkage between tourism and agriculture. As a community in Miku, the only little thing we have to take advantage of the tourism industry is here. Nothing else. We have beautiful area up the up Wakanu. The parrots. We have another beautiful waterfall on the second river. But unfortunately, this river is contaminated. I may say certain things here that may not go, go down well with some of my farmer colleagues. I will, <laughs> I will, <laughs> I will, forgive me. Um, there is a five-star pig pen about 200 yards from this bridge. It, is, it has decimated the second river. The gentleman needs help. He needs help, I believe. We're talking of biogas and what have you. The BAM, the Ministry of Agriculture, your extension officers are aware of it. He's not only speaking terms with me because I, I'm, I'm always agitating. Please bear me the, the pain and try and intervene, see what could be done to salvage this river and this beautiful waterfall. For estate attempted to develop it, put all the infrastructure, but then they did the test and they realized there's something wrong with that river. They took a trek up the road and lo and behold, there was this monstrosity like the famous Sir John said. Please attempt to take care of that. We have a beautiful waterfall right next to this area. I would like to challenge my colleague farmers. We are contributing to the destruction of some of these roads in our activities. We sometimes cut you know, sticks for activities. And there we dump this remnants of what we use right in the drains. The rains come down, clog the drains, these roads get undermined. I see it all the time, whether on the Bakan Road, whether on the Maho Road. Please desist from that. The, use, the indiscriminate use of pesticides in the same rivers. We as a community had two close shaves last year where our main water supply was contaminated. We were lucky we survived. We may not survive the third time. Please desist from such activities that would take us to the, to the great beyond. The other thing is the maintenance of these roads. After these roads are built, we cannot expect government to come in and do the maintenance for us. We can undertake that on our own. It calls for coming together. It calls
calls for farmer groups or, or we. In fact, I stand here, I wear many hats. I am a member of the Eastern Agribusiness Cooperative Society. It's a fairly young farmer cooperative in this area. I implore you all to join this organization. We can get things done by coming together. We can agitate. Europe, England, France, they are built on cooperatives. We can all attest to what happened to us as banana farmers. Banana farmers should be the most powerful people in our country. Where are we now? No SLBGA, no SLBC. I think there is a fair trade. Is there a fair trade? Is it fair? I may sound controversial, excuse me, sorry for that. But at some of these fair trade meetings, we go there and people come in with their hands in their pockets at general meetings and say, nous ni l'argent en bakla la, misi en baksala la, en baksala la. In this day and age, you all should not be sitting and accepting this. You need documentation to prove something. Fair trade, again, it may call for intervention at the highest level. I'm just throwing it out to you all, to the authorities that be. There is need to find out what is happening at these fair trade groups, or whichever is still in existence. Some of these former managers and honchos in the fair trade are, are the ones who now facilitate bananas being sold at the region, on the regional markets. Some of them own the biggest farms. There is need for intervention. I don't want to sound any more controversial. <laughs> Order to thank all those who made this possible, the rehabilitation of this road, we're looking forward to work with you all as farmers. I will not sit by and say it's a two by four road to be built and we get a two by one road. I will make noise. I am inquisitive. I could tell you that. Thank you. I could remember there was a gentleman who came in sometime last year from the EU. Mr. Compton brought him across to us. He was a Belgian gentleman, I think. You came with your small little red car. It was a rainy day. <laughs> you, you parked next to the bridge because it's not passable. And he wanted to walk up this road. He pulled us away from you. And he said to us, let's walk up this road with me. We told him, but you know, it may not be feasible because it's raining, the river may come down, and it may be difficult to come back. And he distinctly said to me, I will come back in the next five years and make sure that you farmers maintain this road. And if it is not maintained to my satisfaction, I will take you all farmers to task. So farmers, the onus is on us. It is our road. It's not government's road. Ce pas chimé gouvernement, c'est sans nous. Nous qui ca souffrir actuellement, nous pas ça lancer l'ovier. Tout terre nous abandonné plus haut. Terre ma gui. Mais bien nom dans la pas ça même mouté ay 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 la terre. There was irrigation and everything. Um brother um Bisset, brother to Jones, brother to to Gregor getting old, he cannot even go up to go up the area. You know. Again, I don't want to sound to, to, to take too much of the time. Again, I would like to thank all those who made it possible on behalf of the farmers. And farmers, I implore you all 
to take hold of what is happening. It is our business. Thank you very much. Well, well, according to the part where people, mama, moi. <laughs> yeah, mama, moi. Yes, yes, yeah, he had my heart beating for a while. <laughs> yeah, all the recommendations, you know, I mean, in 2016, there's no reason why we, our rivers should be contaminated and all of that. I mean, he is so correct. The rate of cancer, the use of pesticides, um, you know, it's a lot of food for thought. And we at the Ministry of Agriculture, we have some work to do whether we like it or not, particularly when it comes to restructuring the banana industry. Everything that he said, he is so correct. Let's give him a round of applause. And of course, he's also quite a historian. He better start putting his pen to paper. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to be thankful for so many things. The pause from the rain, the farmers who are with us, the officials who are here with us, everybody. And we are all in such a good mood.